13, San Diego, number 12, Western Kentucky, West Region Action. Let's take you to Tampa, Florida and join Tim Brando and Mike Jaminski. We welcome you back to the home of the party crashers of the 2008 NCAA Tournament Tampa, Florida. 13th seeded San Diego against number 12 seed Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers and Toreros hope to advance into the Sweet 16 to take on UCLA in Phoenix with a victory today. There's Bill Greer in his first year with the Toreros guiding his team to this improbable matchup today and the 10 that we'll see on the floor will be guard laden as usual led by Brandon Johnson. He and Trumaine are in the backcourt with Dejon Jackson, the star for San Diego in their upset of Connecticut. Rob Jones and Gino Palmer in Western Kentucky counters with the Sunbelt Player of the Year, Courtney Lee, Tyrone Brazelton, fresh off his 33, and Ty Rogers, who hit the shot at the buzzer in overtime, along with Matt Lee and Evans, the starting five for Darren Horn. Only 35 years of age, and there's still time for a little hug and kiss for the kids. Darren, uh, you notice, got a little abrasion there on his, uh, on his nose. He actually injured himself before a two-way interview with, uh, with Brett Gumbel just yesterday. And today's game is being brought to you in HD TV by HP. Our officials for this afternoon's second game, Tony Green, Jamie Lucky, and DJ Karstensen here in Tampa. Western Kentucky Tim wants to play up tempo, get it up and down the floor. Courtney Lee, just like that, right on cue. Well, I, Outstanding analysis. I, I think I think he's going to have a big game. Tim. Yeah. It was a little tight uh, in, in the first round matchup. Played pretty well, but I think getting past that, his game is going to expand. Look for San Diego. I think to try to control things a little bit more in this game. They would like to play in the 60s. Tremaine Johnson pulls up. Just off the baseline, Gino Palmer with the offensive putback, and he's fouled by Magley. DJ Magley got into some early foul difficulty the other day. Freshman from Bradenton, Florida. Palmer did a masterful job against a very big Connecticut front line. A lot of pick and pops for him, shooting mid-range jump shots, making the beat come out and challenge him. Just again to explain what happened to Darren Horn. <laughs> He was about to be interviewed, came to our television production truck about 20 minutes early, and uh, Ken Mack, our producer, said, well, you're a little early. They don't need you for a few minutes. And uh, so he went outside, was uh, texting someone, and a couple of guys that were shorter than him went through a doorway, and without his uh, looking up, there was an overhang that clipped him right under the... Uh, the eyebrow there. I offered to lead him out of the building. He needed somebody obviously taller than him. <laughs> he's checking his messages. <laughs> so he had a shiner for his uh, national interview with Greg Gumbel, Seth Davis, and Clark Kellogg. He wanted to say that he took a charge. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the story he wanted to tell, I think. Bob Jones took an extra step, a little bunny hop on Easter Sunday. Thought Rob Jones played a terrific overtime game in that win against UConn. Uh, Palmer out with foul trouble, and uh, they needed somebody to take over, and uh, he performed admirably. He and Dejon Jackson really, they say, stepped up from their normal complementary roles down the stretch to help claim that upset against uh, Jim Calhoun's team. You know, it's funny, right there, just the ball knocked out of bounds, but. Uh, Ty Rogers arguably got the biggest hand during intros for Western Kentucky, still living the dream. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that, that shot will be for a lifetime, and many ways over for him. Courtney Lee, he has a big time future in this game. Brazelton looking to penetrate. Gets the job done off the glass. Really never gave up his dribble. Good job just keeping, pressing the action. Tremaine Johnson got him to straighten up. You see they defeated UConn in overtime in the first round. There's another deflection. And it was Jackson that made the big shot in that game. Courtney Lee not there. Evans lost it. Those very quick hands belonging to Tremaine Johnson. His emergence really mirrored this uh, San Diego stretch run down the uh, last 10 games, averaging double figures for them. Won their conference tournament on their home floor, and I think there were a few doubters 
But uh, those were erased after Friday's performance as Palmer leans in. Nice patience. No double team coming that time. He got multiple dribbles inside. Western Kentucky letting Magley play one on one. Palmer, who does have an outstanding outside shot, particularly on that uh, pick and pop maneuver, Mike, you mentioned it. He's looking more inside, it appears today. Magley gets the offensive rebound and misses from point blank range. Jones is down on the deck. Brandon Johnson gets it out of there into Jackson's hands. Tough take for Rogers. Brandon Johnson on a blow by. Count the basket. They really, they really did a nice job of emptying out the weak side so help couldn't get there. Uh, Evans tried just not long enough. You see a lot of space in the paint there. Brandon Johnson very strong with the basketball. Brazelton splitting the double team, finding an open Courtney Lee. Tyrone Brazelton absolutely threading right through two. Torero defenders to find the open man. Rob Jones got too high on that show and it allowed Brazelton the gap. He doesn't need much room to split and that's when the defense broke down. Palmer again negotiating inside, rejected by Evans. Brazelton stop and go, whirling Dervish. Oh, what a move. We talked about tempo and what Western Kentucky wants to run it up your back. Brazelton is very quick with the basketball. And a bump by Rogers. Orlando Mendez Valdez is going to check into the game. And AJ Slaughter also on the floor. Boris Siakam. This is a Western Kentucky team that awfully deep. They love to dictate a fast pace, and they'll, as a, a Tennessee team might, uh, get you tired by games end. And I like early substitutions, and if, if you can, if you've got the depth to do it, because you go out there and you just kind of blow out the carburetors in the first two or three minutes, and then you come and get your second wind and get back in. Johnson penetrates and leaves it for Rob Jones. Good move, very solid. Counted in a foul. Western Kentucky has the early lead. Oh, this is a thing of beauty. Find a trapeze of Flying Wallenda. Well, you may be wondering the last time Western Kentucky advanced to the Sweet 16. Well, P.J. Carlissimo was on the sidelines and then sophomore Darren Horn, who got the best of Terry DeHare and the second seeded Seton Hall Pirates. Horn had 15 in the win. Nice jump shot there. Western Kentucky lost to Florida State in overtime in their next game. He looks like he could still play. He looks like he's still fit in that uniform. Absolutely. Solid jump shot, although early that the early play against the Harry was working the ref then, so maybe he <laughs> saw coaching in his blood uh, at an early age. I'm sure to get a text message now from PJ Carlissimo for working into one of his defeats into the show. <laughs> oh, you don't know him. Yeah. Come on, good drop of names. <laughs> Four and a half minutes gone. Courtney Lee looking to set up uh, Valdez, uh, Mendez Valdez, but the ball was knocked away by Dejon Jackson. Talk about another guy whose life has changed. Absolutely. Two of them in this game, two huge shots. His coming with uh, Johnson and Plumer out with foul trouble in that overtime. Western Kentucky doesn't lose a lot when Mendez Valdez is on the floor. Ooh. This time he has almost has his pocket picked by Tremaine Johnson, but the arrow on the tie ball does go to San Diego. And we've seen that a lot in the players slipping on that logo right out front. You watch that foot just goes right out from underneath him, and yep. that's what. And that one was the NCAA logo that uh, he slipped on. We saw it on the uh, South Florida logo, the uh, host school for this region. And they have done a wonderful job. Their director of intercollegiate athletics, Doug Woolard, and his entire staff. Job well done. 
Magley knocked that one away from Palmer. There's a great pass. Jones is hacked by Siakam. Now, Rob Jones, an interesting story. He is the grandson of Jim Jones, and his dad, Jim Jones Jr., was essentially saved by the sport of basketball 30 years ago this November. It was uh, Rob's dad who was playing basketball at a tournament in Georgetown, Guyana. At that time, Jim Jr. lost his first wife, an unborn child. On November 18th of 78, the adopted son of Jim Jones would learn that his father led more than 900 of his cult followers into mass suicide drinking cyanide-laced flavor aid at John Jonestown, Guyana. And um, well, Rob's not really interested in the, the disassociation aspect, but what he is interested in is uh, bringing joy to his father's life, who really had his life saved by the sport of basketball. And it's also helped their relationship as well, so in, in many ways, basketball... Uh, a huge part of, of the family and the healing that has gone on there. Lee, a scoop to the hoop. He looks like a different player to me, Tim. You know, you coming in, you talk about the Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year. We talked to him yesterday. He put a lot of pressure on himself as the season wound down, but he is playing much more freely in this game. Kevin Ginty is coming to the game and promptly turns it over. Brazelton goes the distance. Boy, Tyrone Brazelton has been involved in just about every bucket for Western Kentucky. Their last 12 offensive tries. He's got six points already. And really changes ends quickly. Another pick. And then the foul. Ginty picking it up. There it is. Those lateral passes with a lot of air time. It gives Brazelton so much time to knife through. Great finish. You're not going to catch him in the open floor. We had a chance to speak with the... Uh, a number of these players yesterday. I know it's your favorite part of this assignment when you have a chance to talk with some of these players. Well, you just don't get to invest the time that first go around because you see eight teams and you know consecutively on the practice. But uh, when you get it down to four, especially off the win, it really these a lot of these kids open up, and it's great talking to the coaches as well. And Grazelton, one of those, an understated young man who really brings his persona to the floor. He's fouled again so quick, and Brandon Johnson picks up the foul. Ty Rogers comes in. You know, we were talking about uh, Denny Rumpf with uh, the impact that he had on Courtney Lee when Courtney was uh, considering the possibility of leaving Western Kentucky. And as we were talking about the late teammate, Denny Rumpf, uh, Ty Rogers' eyes began to fill up. He was uh, the memory of, uh, of what Denny meant to this team. He, um, he allowed us to, to see his true emotions. Brazelton not there. Palmer gets the rebound. Johnson pulls up. Tough shot. Matchup. That's, that's the one I was waiting to see. They hadn't been guarding each other, but uh, Johnson and Brazelton. Slaughter over Ginty. A.J. Slaughter, a sophomore from Shelbyville, Kentucky. Was a starter early in the year, but now comes off the bench to give them a little pop. Right now, this helter-skelter style is really benefiting Western Kentucky. Palmer takes advantage in the paint. Well, I think he's going to be a little more inside-oriented in this game. Had to drift to the perimeter against UConn. Brazelton rejected by Palmer. And Jeremy Evans will get back out there for Western Kentucky and relieve uh, Boris Siakam. They only have two double-figure scorers over the course of the season, Brandon Johnson and uh, Gino Palmer. But the other guys have stepped up and have become more aggressive offensively. Rodgers triggers it in. Slaughter leaves it for Evans over Palmer. And the rebound secured by Clinton Houston. Brandon Johnson got airborne and turned it over. A rare mistake. And almost an unforced turnover by Western Kentucky. Brazelton leading the way for this team. And just barely got over half court before a 10 second violation. Well, that time Evans wasn't ready for the interior pass. Johnson on a blow by against Brazelton and Tyrone picks up the foul. NCAA March Madness On Demand is streaming every game from the NCAA Championship online for free. 
You can watch any game anytime at the new NCAA.com. Well, it's interesting you say blow by by Brazel, and that's tough to do, and it shows you the speed of the point guards in this game. And Brandon Johnson, the advantage he has is he get in the paint more and stockier than Brazelton. I think he can give him a little trouble physically. We asked uh, Brandon yesterday about uh, when San Diego knew they had a great team, and uh, he said a lot of people thought it was that early season win at Kentucky. In truth, it was the game they played against uh, USC. They felt that uh, when they could play with those guys and compete, that they were a legitimate team in the West Coast Conference. Only a 10-point loss to USC. So, you know, what you can take. This is considered, too, this team started 8-11, and 11, Tim. So they, they really overcame a lot to be here. Mendez Valdez. Nice stop and go. They're very much under control. And the pressure comes. Jones trying to deal with it. Yeah, they'll run and jump full court and half court. Ginty feeds Brandon Johnson on the wing. Pulls up over Slaughter. Rob Jones on the offensive glass. That ball was deflected. Out of bounds. Last touch by San Diego. Western Kentucky extends its lead on 57% shooting. They're up by six. Greg Clark and Seth in New York. We'll get you right back to Tampa after we check into what's happening first in Birmingham. Once upon a time, Tennessee had a 13-point lead, but now it's 33-29. to 29. Volunteers. Butler taking care of the basketball, getting three-point shots. A.J. Graves, Pete Campbell have knocked down a couple of threes. A very experienced team, unflappable, even though the Butler Bulldogs started slowly. This is a team that can really shoot it, understands how to stay in the game by keeping its poise. Tennessee has not taken care of the basketball already nine turnovers. They do tend to throw it around the gym because they're trying to create a style, but uh, Butler did a very good job withstanding that first rush. They settled in. They're playing a good game. Meanwhile, in Raleigh, Davidson hanging with Georgetown. Nine minutes even to play in the first half, and it's the Hoyas, but not by much. And they're not doing it because of Stephen Curry. He just a moment ago scored his first field goal of the game, so he only has two points. Roy Hibbert just went to the bench with two fouls, but I actually think that Georgetown might do better with the smaller, quicker lineup so they can uh, stay up with Davidson. All no right. disagreement there. Both of these teams. Davidson's a terrific team. Stephen Curry is clearly their star, but this is a solid, balanced basketball team. One other score for you there at halftime in Little Rock, Texas, is leading Miami 43 to 32. Keep tabs on all those scores for you. Let's get you back to Tampa and rejoin Tim Brando and Mike Jaminski. In a game that has featured outstanding play by both Courtney Lee and Tyrone Brazelton, who was uh, one of the stars of that uh, frenetic Friday that we had in Tampa, Western Kentucky leads by six. San Diego has been forced into a few turnovers because of this uh, outstanding defense that Western Kentucky has brought forth. And that's the hero of the game, Dijon Jackson, has not had a field goal attempt so far. Pomer, who only missed two shots against the taller Connecticut Huskies, is on fire, though. Three for four for him from the floor. He's got seven. And again, Timmy, he can take Jeremy Evans down low. He's got a strength advantage over him. He did a nice job of holding him on his back. Courtney Lee, ball fake. This time off the back iron. He'll launch again, this time from three. The Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year. Two of the best times to get open threes in transition and off offensive rebounds. Senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Pike High School. What a future he has. Brandon Johnson's been frustrated. The leader of this team, he's been taken out. Now there's the pressure again on Dijon Jackson, and it forces a turnover. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg Clark and Seth will take you out for a live look at all of the action going on around the NCAA tournament. We'll get you caught up in all of the latest tournament news, plus an AT&T Coach's Corner. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. You know the run and jump is coming at you with Western Kentucky. You have to have some poise. Try not to give your dribble up and be strong with the basketball. Well, you see the turnover story. Six. San Diego's got one more turnover than they have field goals. Courtney Lee. Giving Western Kentucky their largest lead. He's got 13 of their 23. Timeout in Tampa. He plays the Lee Nylon song.
As you look at our game summary, Courtney Lee really flexed his muscles in the last five minutes of this game, Mike. Now he really, he's, he's gotten off to a quick start, right off of the jump ball, the easy layup, and that's always a good thing to get you in rhythm. And he has never looked back. He's shown the ability to put it on the floor, get to the rim. He's got three-point range, really the whole package. San Diego has 13 points. Mm -hmm. Courtney Lee has 13 points <laughs> in this game. And uh, mom and dad, Robert and Tier are up to cheer their young son who's got such an outstanding future. <laughs> As we said, we had an opportunity to visit with, with Courtney Lee and Ty Rogers, Tyrone Brazel than yesterday. And uh, boy, he's almost got a Lou Roll sound to his voice. He could probably sing uh, in a wonderful trio. 14 to four Western Kentucky run. A run that uh, has 10 points from Courtney Lee. Jackson attempts, but can't get it to fall. Rob Jones, the offensive rebound. Brandon Johnson feeds Palmer. He's rejected by Jeremy Evans. Jackson steals it from Courtney Lee. Something good needs to happen, Mike, for Brandon Johnson soon. I think he's the uh, straw that stirs the drink for this San Diego team. Uh, they really look to him, too, for some confidence. Pomer finally getting double teamed inside. Yep, and he'll get to the line. Magley and, and Evans, very athletic but foul prone. They were in foul trouble early in the game against Drake. Well, what is, now has two. What has worked, too, is that Magley has kept the body on Pomer, and it has allowed Evans to come in as the blocker and the, the second defender in. What that might do is leave Rob Jones open on the offensive glass if they can find him. Tonight on 60 Minutes, a little stone box said to have a big connection to Jesus. Tonight on 60 Minutes. Gino Palmer. His uh, dad, a uh, Marine, comes from a military family and can really sense in conversation with him that uh, mom and dad did a wonderful job bringing him up. An outstanding young man. Razelton again looks to penetrate, dishes to Evans. Well, he's got a little bit of that uh, Stacy Ogman look about him, a plastic man approach as he gets close to the rack. Yeah, long limb to the guy that's uh, tough to deal with on the front of their press. Jackson feeds Palmer. Good ball movement by San Diego. A very unselfish play. Jackson had a point blank shot as well, but he gave it up for a layup. Palmer has the last eight points for the Toreros. He's really kept uh, the fight in these uh, bullfighters from San Diego. Evans pops out this time. That's not his game. Air ball taken down by Brandon Johnson. Only taken 18 threes on the regular season. Not sure Darren Horn likes that shot selection. Oh, Paul Mayer using the window. He's got some touch. He's a little bit of a throwback, Mike, don't you think, in terms of his uh, offensive approach to the game? Gino Palmer, 13 for him. But Magley's got the, the size to battle with him, but Evans, uh, he's just gobbling him up right now. Lee, a leaner. Boy, he's got some moves to the basket. 27 to 19. Western Kentucky wants a high possession game. They will get shots up quickly. You have a guy like Courtney Lee who can manufacture his own offense. In the half court, it certainly helps. Remain Johnson now operating at the point with a shot clock under 10. And on the show, Evans comes out and picks up yet another foul. And that gives Jeremy his first. Timeout. 27 to 19, Hilltoppers. Tim Brando, Mike Janinski here in Tampa. Western Kentucky, probably one of the great programs that have been maybe flying under your radar, but not those in Bowling Green. Look at that. Most 20 win seasons up there with the likes of Louisville, Duke, UCLA, North Carolina, and Kentucky. Those are all brand names above them and a very impressive history of basketball. 
from Bowling Green. Absolutely, and uh, carrying on a tradition that he was a part of as a player, EA Diddle Arena, one of the outstanding pits in all of college basketball. It is tough to get a win, and in truth, uh, to get a quality opponent from a major conference to play. You know, I think that's the issue that faces coaches at conferences like this, the Sun Belt. You're very athletic, and no one wants to come and play in your building. Yeah, they want you to come. They'll, they'll travel you all they want. And uh, Darren Horn, it's, it's tough. You know, there are a lot of pitfalls to going home and coaching back at your alma mater, but he, he has had a nice run early on. Oh, Siakam. Well, jump stop by Boris Siakam off the bench. Senior from Cameroon. 29 to 21. Brazelton really giving Brandon Johnson a hard time. Just has not been able to shake loose. Jones will high low game to Palmer. He just doesn't stop. He has. Well, they're all over the place. They're very disciplined. They really run their stuff well. Evans slams it home. We can see the difference. That, you know, San Diego comes down. They're going to run clock. They're going to be patient. And Western Kentucky just revs it up, and they want to get back down as quickly as possible. It's such an athletic team, particularly on the wings. There's a steal by Slaughter. Numbers for Brazelton. Back to Evans, and he's fouled by Tremaine Johnson. I mentioned Stacy Ogman a moment ago. This is going to bring back some memories of that for you from his running rebel days. Yeah, pretty nice find, too, by Ty Rogers in and amongst all the trees. That's what penetration does. It drew Pomer to him, and that left a wide open run to the front of the rim. Western Kentucky shooting at better than a 60% clip. And uh, to San Diego's credit, and particularly Gino Pomer, they have not been able to run away and hide. And the reason why, these are the first free throw attempts for Western Kentucky in the game. San Diego 7 of 11, so hanging in there in that stat. Notice uh, Bill Greer is getting Ginty back into the game as well as Clinton Houston, a seldom used freshman at one point this year. Freshman out of Dallas, Texas. That's what Greer has probably um, most proud of, I think, is how some of the reinforcements, guys that maybe weren't getting as much playing time early in the season, have really made a solid contribution in the uh, conference tournament as well as here. Yeah, Tremaine Johnson has really blossomed. Clinton Houston giving him good minutes yesterday, uh, the other game against UConn because of foul trouble. Not a senior on that roster. Houston looking for Pomer. That shouldn't surprise anyone. Boris Siakam trying to front Gino now. Limit some touches. Genty runs the curl and launches a three ball. And Pomer guilty over the back. Siakam had position, and Gino Pomer gets his first foul. That's a perfect example of a, of a foul that doesn't need to be committed. There was no way that Gino Pomer was going to come up with that basketball, so just let it go, get back on defense, and play on. Brazelton has Siakam, Lee, A.J. Slaughter, and Ty Rogers out there with him. Calls the old number one play, and Siakam gets the offensive rebound so they can set up shop again. Courtney Lee kept that play alive by punching the rebound back out. He couldn't get it. Siakam lost it. Palmer took it away. Again, we're waiting for that breakout moment for Brandon Johnson. One of four so far in this game, not even getting attempts. That's the quickness of Brazelton. I think he's used to getting to the rim a little bit more easily. Oh, that pass. He anticipated a cut to the basket by Dejon Jackson. It was not there. Here's the look inside, and Jackson gave a little faint. It looked like a... a, a a receiver that broke his root off, and I think that uh, Jack, that uh, Brandon saw a wide open lane inside. Four and a half remaining. Eight field goals and eight turnovers now for San Diego. Orlando Mendez Valdez back on the floor, and Palmer comes out and gets another cheap one. 
That's two. And they can ill afford to lose him. See, you know, Timmy, he, he's, he's the only guy who's been effective in this game, and that's another foul. You can't pick that one up. 15 points for him, and now he's going to be forced to go to the bench. And that means Bill Greer has got to manifest some offense from someone else in blue. And Rob Jones is, uh, is the guy up front that you want to try to, to get. 2,057 seconds of play for Palmeiro. Lee over Jones. Not there, and Rodgers lost it. Ty Rodgers was telling us that the uh, population of Eddyville is about 2,500 or so. <laughs> and uh, I really I really think he should anticipate a ticker tape parade of some kind when he gets home, don't you? <laughs> After what happened the other day, another scramble situation. They may have to throw it up in the air. There are probably not a lot of tall buildings there, Tim. <laughs> no, you're right. Actually, I think what you do there is you would throw the confetti up into the air, then it would come back down. <laughs> San Diego only turned the ball over 11 times in 45 minutes, Mike. Today, nine turns in 16 minutes. You see head coach Bill Greer there his uh, first year. Long-time assistant to Mark Few up in Gonzaga. Told us yesterday he felt very prepared for this job because Mark Few gives him so much latitude and yeah. practices up there. Had a little trepidation about coaching in the same conference. But uh, really, it was, it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. Yeah, you know, when the two, when, when Bill Brewer speaks, it's almost as if you're talking with Mark Few. They have a very exacting approach to the game. There's Courtney Lee again. He's got 17. Mark may be admittedly a, a bit more calculating than Greer. He shows a, a bit more of his uh, true feelings than uh, than Mark might. But, uh, boy, their approach to the game and, uh, and to life, very similar. Another turnover. Maybe no surprise that uh, UConn lost to Gonzaga early in the year, and then they lost to uh, Gonzaga too <laughs> here two days ago. Uh, Jim Calhoun's had quite enough of uh, the Mountain and Pacific time zone in dealing with a zag-like approach to the game. Siakam got Clint Houston airborne and dropped it in. Mendez Valdez made that play, setting his teammate up, and I love the little pump fake inside. Good base, well executed. Bench scoring all with Western Kentucky pitching a shutout, eight to nothing in that category. Brandon Johnson needs to get started and does. Able to back up, create a little space for himself. Well, with Gino Palmera out of the game, it is essential that number one take the game over in blue. Brazelton over to Rogers. Houston gets the rebound. That young man has played well. Because of foul trouble, had to play 25 minutes against UConn, maybe more than uh, normally used. Averages eight minutes on the year. Johnson leaves it for Rob Jones, and he's fouled. Courtney Lee coming over to give some help, picking it up. And our star watch today, these guys have done their job, that's for sure. Well, and it's, it's just that Courtney Lee has got some help around him. That secondary scorer has not shown up for San Diego. Brandon Johnson is their leading scorer on the year, and he did knock down that three. Just and that's the, you know now that's the, the, the problem with uh, Pomer is that he's not on the floor adding to his total. A couple of silly fouls within one minute of one another has got him on the bench. Rob Jones and you look at his body and you can understand why he was an outstanding football player. Archbishop Reardon out of uh, San Francisco was recruited by the likes of Cal, Oregon, and Notre Dame. Gets one of the two to go. 10 point Western Kentucky lead. How many of those, uh, how many former tight ends uh, oh, played yeah. football or played basketball as well? Antonio Gates comes to mind. Yep. Tony Gonzalez. Yep. There's a steal. Tremaine Johnson comes out of there with it for the Toreros. He leans in, picks up the player control foul. Good job by Ty Rogers. You can see that a senior smells an opportunity to collect a charge, and Rodgers did right there. Stepping in, that was, that was well done. Tremaine Johnson should have read that, tried to shoot the little floater, but had, took it one dribble too many. When we asked Rodgers yesterday about matching up with uh, 
San Diego and, and Brandon Johnson. He said that uh, there was a player in the Sun Belt, Bo McCaleb of uh, the University of New Orleans, that they felt was similar. And they have really done the job against Brandon today defensively. Lee. He may just be too quick off the dribble for Jones to guard. 19 points for Courtney Lee on 8 of 11 shooting. Yeah, I was going to say he's so efficient in this game. Mendez Valdez takes it right out of the air. Chris Lewis lost it, the sophomore. And there's Brazelton again. I like the combination of Mendez Valdez and Brazelton on the floor. This is classic right here. Two hard dribbles off that bounce and elevate. Beautiful form on the jump shot. Boy, that is a big time pro body right there, Courtney Lee. 19 points on 8 of 11 shooting, as we mentioned. He may be, Mike, one of those incredible players we oftentimes say in the tournament. We learn so much about what we uh, probably don't know about the regular season. This is one of the best players in the country that most of America didn't know about until this week. You know what, Timmy? Great players are going to score. But if you do your job defensively, he's 8 of 20. Yep. When he goes 8 of 11, he wins. When you've got a penetrate and kick guard like Brazelton to go along with uh, outstanding wing talent like that of Courtney Lee. You've got plenty in your arsenal to win at this level. Skip pass to Tremaine Johnson. Rogers the rebound for Western Kentucky. And a timeout taken by Darren Horn. 32.4 remaining until halftime. Hilltoppers have it all going their way here in the opening half. Western Kentucky, another 12 seed, uh, dominating a 13, and they are 25 and 0 when leading at the half this season. Darren Horn's team has been really kicking in on all cylinders offensively. You see a 61% in the first round and almost that good today. Well, Courtney Lee is the one who got them off and got them confidence. Closing seconds of this half when what has been a scintillating first 20 minutes for Courtney Lee, Tyrone Brazelton, and the rest of the Hilltoppers. About three seconds between shot and game clock. Brazelton will initiate with 10 on the shot clock. Rogers pumps. Not this time. Slaughter tried to save it, but did so off the uh, other side of the backboard, so it belongs to San Diego. Rogers, the star with the uh, big shot, heard round the world, and the overtime win against Drake, scoreless so far in today's game. Landon Johnson looking to get a lift. Tough first half for him as Western Kentucky leads it by 12. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel with AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. What was treacherous Tampa has been a bit more according to form here in the West region second round uh, Western Kentucky with a 12 point lead Tim Brando Mike Jaminski and uh, San Diego's got to find a way to get some some baskets outside the painted area only one uh, one three point attempt Brandon Johnson really slowed by the changing defenses of Western Kentucky but uh, it has really been Courtney Lee yeah. that has really carried a load 19 of their 39 points for him what an incredible performance by this young man. And he's done it all. Put it on the deck, stopped and popped, you name it. Yeah, no, got off to that quick start, the layup off the opening tip, and that's the last thing you want to give a great score is a good feel right away. But he has really not looked back. 8 of 11 shooting, 3 of 4 from behind the arc. And here is the in-game box score powered by CBS College Sports Network, the 24-hour college sports channel from CBS Sports. And uh, Paul Mayer, who did check out with the two fouls, will be counted upon early and often, one would uh, think, uh, to counter Courtney Lee, who's been nothing short of incredible today. Palmer is 6 of 8 from the floor, 15. The rest of the team, a collective 3 out of 12. 
And that won't get it done. And I think to a certain extent, Mike, San Diego, you know, the, the contrast in styles for their opposition today versus Connecticut on Friday, uh, pretty incredible. They've, they've had to make a, a greater transition than just about anyone in Tampa in well, terms of who they had to match up with. And UConn relies on shot blocking, but uh, Western Kentucky really runs and jumps and wants to turn you over. And the Toreros did that 12 turns in the first half, 15 points off it. So they're going to have to do a better job of handling pressure. Brandon Johnson with that lone three-pointer needs to get on track here in the second half. Did not get off to a good start. It was one of the reasons really San Diego fell behind by double digits. He's got him off the ball and Brazelton's just been all over him. Can't quit. There's a nice runner by Tremaine Johnson off the window. Yeah, that's, you know, he needs to be aggressive, too, because I think he's got a little bit of a quickness advantage over Courtney Lee. Just faced him up and broke him down right. That's his first field goal. Madley leaving it for Evans. Well, post play that time, high-low between the two. Yeah, good interior passing. Magley cut off. Lee comes down with a rebound and then throws it away. Rob Jones gets an easy one. And Courtney Lee a little casual with the ball. Tried to hop out and throw the ball in. And Rob Jones, seeing that cut back, made a nice play. Well, the first 90 seconds, San Diego making inroads offensively. Palmer gets a rebound, has it taken away by Rogers. Tried to save it, but did so to Tremaine Johnson. Jones up and under goes reversal and misses. He was aware of Evans, the shot blocker, and that may have affected the shot. Brazelton dumps it to Evans and he's fouled. Well, watch Rogers, a human floor burn here. Yeah, he tried to go in and just laid right out and then slipped, adding insult to injury on the end line, having trouble getting a little traction. Dejon Jackson picked up that foul for San Diego, his second. The winner punches a ticket for a date with UCLA in Phoenix, Arizona, in the regional semifinals next week. It's not been an easy road for the Bruins. No, here. it's not. It has not. But think about that chance in this day and age, the chance to go to three consecutive Final Fours. They have though the uh, propensity, it seems, to run into scoring droughts, Mike, and it's hard to figure because of the outstanding individual offensive talent they have. And against a team like uh, Western Kentucky, you, you may have to score a bit more. As you see Johnson trying to force the issue that time. Uh, 12s versus 13s. Now that number is up to 5 and 1 for the 12s after Little Nova's win against Siena in the Midwest region we had earlier today. A lone victory coming for uh, Homer Drew in Valparaiso back in 1998. Those dark uniforms that meant so much to winners in this building on Friday. Today, just a different karma in the building. And, and, and there's been a different karma with Western Kentucky all year long and leading it to half. We showed you at the break, 25-0, a front-running team. Brandon Johnson on Friday had 18 points today. He's got six as Courtney Lee challenges Rob Jones. Foul actually will be against Rick Tremaine Johnson, his third. I'm going to give him two shots. And uh, Devin Ginty will have to come into the game for Johnson because Trumaine has three. I think the thing with Lee, you really got to sit on his right hand. Everything he's done in this game has come to their right hand off the dribble. Somehow you have to make him go to his weak side and beat you that way.
He's hit at least one three-pointer in 19 consecutive games, two and a half steals per game. Yeah, that's the early, the body yep. that time. Wasn't so much the reach in. And he was on his way up, and that's why it was a shooting violation. The refreshing attitude that this star has. Never bigger than the team. Mid-major All-American. Ginty. Running with the offense, looking to find Brandon Johnson. Dejon Jackson takes it in, establishes contact with Magley, and will get to the line. And he started at the place where he hit the game-winning shot against UConn. But the reason why he didn't do the same thing in that game it's because uh, the beat was in there at 7-3. A <laughs> little bit different with Magley in there. Yeah, he actually used his body as a shield. And, and as we said, it was one of those outstanding maneuvers of, with true grit. You know, just taking it to the rack in a relentless fashion and almost establishing the contact as you see Magley sitting down now with the three fouls. That could be an interesting aspect of the second half for San Diego, Mike, if uh, if Magley and Evans get into some foul difficulty. You know, Darren Horn told us that he, he didn't think that the game would have gone to overtime with Drake had Evans not uh, fouled out of the game. Evans is the key. I mean, I, I think they can they can play without Magley, and they've become actually a little, lot more athletic with Siakam in there. Speaking of Boris, he whirls one in there, 45 to 33. But Evans is the only eraser they have at the rim. He cleans up a lot of problems with his shot blocking. Look at that bench point story. 10 to nothing, a shutout for Western Kentucky. Ginty rejected. Brazelton started it. He'll finish it. It's rare that you block a jump shot, but uh, Brazelton that quick. Jones. That's a block. Siakam can't believe it. Dusts himself off. Great timing by that play, and then the one-handed outlet pass by Courtney Lee. Rob Jones gets to the free throw line. It's an eerily similar game, don't you think, to the uh, first matchup we had, although I think maybe San Diego isn't lacking the confidence that perhaps Siena was. Uh, just when they begin to make a run, they turn it over a couple of times, and Western Kentucky's defense obviously has a lot to do with that. Well, that, and, uh, and it's, it's interesting, in the first four minutes, Pomera has not touched the basketball either. He's there been their leading offensive player, and Western Kentucky really kind of building a wall around him. Jeremy Evans takes a seat. And they have had a consistent lead throughout the course of this game as uh, the Hilltoppers. Pettigrew has come into the game number 30 for Western Kentucky. Giving it up to Tyrone Brazelton. Johnson deflected it, but Courtney Lee was there to save it. And he got it right to Tyrone. And he knocks down another triple. 50 to 35, and the lead spreads now to 15. Toreros need a charge. Jackson. Nobody stepping up to stop the dribble on the open court. Brazelton working on Dejon Jackson. Ty Rogers pulls up. Nice move. And Ty Rogers, the man that got Western Kentucky in this game, finally gets into the scoring column today. His first bucket. And he did a good job of following behind the penetration that time. Brazelton working well with his backcourt mate. Jermaine Johnson back on the floor with the three fouls. As the ball knocked away. 26 to shoot. With a break on the floor. Western Kentucky's lead is 15. Let's get you to New York and Greg Gumbel. San Diego trailing by 15, 52 to 37. And one would think that uh, Gino Palmer 
needs to get a touch. In this half, the leading scorer for the Toreros has not gotten a shot off. Number 21 in blue, who means so much to this team. Great job of Western Kentucky changing defenses, a little matchup point zone right now. They always have a body in front of Pomera. Nice look. Got it into Rob Jones. Boy, he's got good hands. That's what you want to do. Attack the zone. Get it right into the middle. You got a big who can get to the free throw line and have sight lines. Those two work very well on that play. Lou Grick can be proud of uh, what his team has been able to accomplish out of timeouts for the most part in this tournament. This is where you find out how good a concentrating team you have. <laughs> Pay attention. And I know that sounds strange, but. Get locked in on what you want to do, come out and execute it. It's uh, good coaching and good concentration. Well, Tremaine Johnson just picked up his fourth. Well, that's a matchup problem when Genty has to come in and replace him, but that's exactly what's going to happen. Tonight on CBS, Dexter investigates his own crime scene on an all-new episode tonight at 10, 9 Central on CBS. Well, you have to make the adjustment, uh, Mike, in the way the game is being called. Uh, those bumps away from the basket this afternoon are going to be whistled, and Tremaine Johnson's just not been able to handle Brazelton. The alley-oop for Lee, mistimed slightly by Brazelton. Right, and actually, Courtney Lee probably would have been better served to catch and come down. Ginty looking to go inside. Let's get back to New York and Greg Gumbel. Jones collects the rebound for the Toreros. Johnson leans in. Pettigrew, I think, got a little piece of that one to keep it short. Brazelton again, that 360 move. It was rejected. Nice work by Dijon Jackson. Now Brandon Johnson end to end. Well, a bit of a four-point swing there, and suddenly San Diego has it to within 10. A little bit of a running screen, too, by Rob Jones that time. Just slowed Brazelton down enough. Talked about this uh, the other day in the matchup with Drake, Mike. Sometimes when you play the way the Hilltoppers do, uh, no lead is safe and no deficit uh, too difficult to climb. While there are more possessions in, in the drought, so it allows your team to get back in. The lead is now 12 as we approach nine minutes deep in this second half. Western Kentucky with the lead. They've been uh, in control throughout, but San Diego trying to make a run with the help of Chino Palmer and Brandon Johnson. Rob Jones with a little hang time. Doesn't uh, fall, and it's taken down by Courtney Lee. Boy, Mike, that uh, Miami effort against Texas today may have surprised a few people. Uh, it surprised me. I didn't think it was nearly going to be that close, and a great uh, show of affection at the end of that game between Rick Barnes and Frank Hayden. Frank having been on Rick's staff before getting the Miami job. Palmer there to save it as Brandon Johnson was in trouble. It's interesting how in uh, usually the second rounds of these tournaments you have stories like that as Brandon Johnson nails his second triple of the day. It seems that familiarity does breed contempt and college coaching when these matchups and seedings occur in the NCAA tournament. Well, no, no, it's not strange either that successful coaches have assistants that go on and have success. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, run right here and Bill Greer coming off of Mark Few's staff. Evans left free in the paint. Too strong. Palmer clears it. San Diego showing some fight. The fight of the Toreros. Brandon Johnson. Off the back iron, gets his own rebound. Rejected by Evans. Boy, has, been, has he been an eraser today. Just get a feeling that Brandon Johnson's uh, getting his hops back. Now it's a slaughter that's trailing him. They've used a variety of outstanding guards with length on him today. They just want to keep pressure on him at all costs. And he'll get to the line, forcing the issue against slaughter.
And the San Diego crowd stands and applauds the effort of number one, the junior from Houston, Texas. Well, I made mention of the fact in the first half, Tim, that uh, we talked to Brandon yesterday, and he, he's had an issue with cramps all year and uh, really working hard, and this really affects his jump shot and his lift. Let's see if that comes into play in the last nine minutes. Well, that's a tired free throw, too. Well, the best place to get college sports today, college sports tonight. Get inside the latest news, scores, highlights, and more only on the CBS College Sports Network, the new pulse of college sports. Brandon Johnson is one of five at the line as you see Gino Palmer taking a seat. Got a couple of early fouls in the first half, just getting a bit of a rest here to prepare himself for the stretch run. Plus San Diego trying to scramble it up with pressure, and they got it. Steps. It will go the other way. Well, great little surprise run and jump by San Diego, and Brazelton dribbled right into it. He had no outlets once he picked his dribble up. This decision by Bill Greer to go small and and pressure Western Kentucky. It's that age-old uh, story. Teams that press don't like being pressed. Dejon Jackson operating at the point. Ty Rogers back on Brandon Johnson. And a hand check. Against Courtney Lee. That's his second. You get the feeling that maybe Western Kentucky's uh, holding on just a little. They may have hit a bit of a an offensive wall. Well, and it's just in credit San Diego. They've turned up the pressure a little bit too, Tim. And uh, we just talked about the margin of error when you dig yourself a big hole. Oh, nice move. Exactly what Jackson's specialty is. Driving and slashing to the basket. Timeout Hilltoppers. Here come the Toreros. An 11-2 run for San Diego. Well, this has been impressive, Mike. Well, they, you know, they've done it, they've done it defensively, and they've really kind of re-energized themselves and uh, looked like they were in that kind of zone where they had a double figure deficit and they really couldn't crack into it but keep in mind you saw something similar to this in the first game now it's the hard part I think it's, it's not that it's been easy to get to this point but the last part of this deficit to knock it down and make it a tie game that's going to be the that's going to be the big key now a six point lead as close as it's been in a long long time 54 to 48 and uh, Bill Greer's team resourceful. They're in timeout in Tampa, and while they are there, we're waiting for Butler and Tennessee to come out of a timeout in Birmingham. It was 38-34 Tennessee at halftime. It is a three-point Tennessee lead now, 326 to play. Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery. All right, 326 to play. What's been the key to Butler hanging with Tennessee? Well, they've picked it up defensively, and they've knocked down some timely threes, and the penetration ability of Mike Green has been able to get the Butler Bulldogs to the foul line. Anytime you're trailing, you want to be able to try to score with the clock stop. What kind of problems has Tennessee had lately? Point guard position. Uh, Jordan Howell hadn't played well down the stretch. Ray, there's regular starter Raymar Smith did not start again today. They've been throwing the ball all over the place. It's given Butler those added possessions, and I think it's also taken away Tennessee's depth advantage. They like to wear teams down down the stretch but Butler's been able to control the pace because they've had the ball so often. The winner of this game will move on to Charlotte to play the winner of the next game upcoming in Birmingham between Oklahoma and Louisville. Let's take you to Birmingham now. Vernon Raft. Butler has one timeout remaining. They've committed nine fouls. They do have the possession arrow and Brad Stevens the 31 year old first year head coach has his team very much in this one, trying to get back to the Sweet 16 again. And now what he does, he's got Matt Howard with the four fouls on the floor. That's going to be a puzzle for Tennessee because they can't just go inside and get an easy catch and finish because he's such a physical player. Because with the floor, he's got to be careful. Mike Green at the line. Player of the Year, Horizon League. 77% over the course of the season. Perfect. We'll keep tabs on that game for you. Let's get you back to Tampa. Coming up on eight and a half minutes to play. Once again, Tim Brando, Mike Chaminsky. 
As close as San Diego's been since uh, six minutes remained in the first half. And Brazelton with the clock winding down. Lee gets the offensive rebound. DJ Magley back on the floor. He walked. He walked in an attempt to get the ball to Courtney Lee. Too many hands in the area, and the uh, adding insult that Courtney Lee knocked that shot down, the 10th turnover for Western Kentucky. All game long, we were waiting, waiting for a, a, a breakout moment for Brandon Johnson. He had a couple, and then DeJon Jackson got into the act. And with Gino Palmer sitting out, largely, I think, because of uh, the type of defense that Bill Greer needs to play right now. San Diego's made their run without their top scorer. Brandon Johnson. There's Clint Houston with a rebound. And he's fouled. Got Magley airborne. And DJ picks up the foul. That's number four. Let's get back to New York for an update with Greg. The Toreros of San Diego on a 12-2 run over the last seven minutes and 17 seconds have uh, gotten themselves right back into the thick of this one. And Clint Houston converts two at the line to carve it to four. And uh, that allows Gino Palmera, the leading scorer, who only has one point in this half, to get back into the game with a much more manageable set of circumstances. Well, Brandon Johnson has caught a little bit of fire, and they've carved into a lot of this lead at the free throw line. They've missed 10 in the game, Tim, but they've still outscored Western Kentucky by 10. DJ Magley out of the game now for the Hilltoppers with four fouls. Evans remains on the floor with Ty Rogers, Tyrone Brazelton, Boris Siakam, and Courtney Lee, who's also been uh, stymied here in the second half, only one point. Brazelton, a nice rush to the basket, but he can't convert. And Rob Jones collects the rebound. And Evans missing a point blank putback as well. Two easy opportunities gone by. And we said it earlier, it almost appeared that Western Kentucky was holding on here. Palmer. Little jump hook, and we're down to a two-point lead. And a turnover right to us. Miscommunication with Siakam and Lee. Brian Brazelton right in front of him, and he wow. chose to put the ball up, and Lee wasn't even looking at the pass. And Darren Horn wants a timeout. He's got that proverbial deer-in-the-headlights look coming from some of his players. Needs to settle him down. With seven minutes left, the Toreros are believing. Just a remarkable. Here Indiana basketball was A.J. Ratliff. He was the runner-up. I mean, this kid's a legitimate big-time player and showing it. Tied at 60 with two and a half remaining. Smith looks for Chisholm. Stryker guards him. Stryker, a wonderful defender. And Howard doing a great job. Took away Chisholm on the box. Now Prince. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Chisholm. Howard plays with four fouls. Wow, what a terrific turnaround. A little jump, lefty stroke. Away from the traffic again. Stepping up big time. Two to go. Striker, Howard. I still believe that may be the best game of this tournament to this point. The Drake Western Kentucky game was absolutely off the charts from beginning to end. 200 points, scored threes, yeah. a lot of action, a lot of intrigue, comebacks. No question about it. All you wanted in a college basketball game in five minutes more. Yep. Now a chance to tie for San Diego. Johnson spreading the floor, feeds Ginty on the wing. Gavin Ginty with a triple. His first from downtown. 55-54, Terreros with a lead. Now we talked about Western Kentucky is going to have to win this game twice if they're going to come out on the other end. Gave away a double-figure lead. An 18-2 run. Courtney Lee with a silencer. 57-55. And he's got the look on his face like he's ready to take this game over. First field goal this half for the uh, Sun Belt Player of the Year. But for Bill Greer and his team, mission accomplished. They've made this a game again. 
and did it with a lot of patience. Didn't come out and try to get it all done in the first five minutes of the second half. Well, this is really a well-schooled team. And this man, Brandon Johnson, frustrated early, has stayed with it with three different defenders. All of them taller and athletic. Shot clock down to three. He'll have to pump. Just caught a piece of the iron. Razel's in the rebound. Great defensive job by Ty Rogers. On the offensive end, he's fouled by Jackson. Beyond the arc, that'll be three. I think a little bit of a sales job right there by Ty Rogers. He's got a little smile on his face as he got up. I'm sure he repeated that mantra to his team in the last time out about having faith in themselves, which yeah. he used against Drake after their comeback. Third foul on Jackson. <laughs> There's a little Reggie Miller in that flop, but uh, clearly there was contact. All those uh, days in the gym, all those opportunities to play in your backyard. He was discussing that with us the other day. Was Ty Rogers? Come from, come from a town of 2,500, Tim, and uh, all of a sudden you're on the national stage and your shot is being replayed everywhere. <laughs> He'll hear about it for a lifetime. And it probably would help him, I think, once he gets into the workforce in and around the Bowling Green, Kentucky area. I don't even type up a resume. <laughs> I just bring in a DVD. Here, put this one in. That's what I did. Yeah, he should be America's guest in Kentucky <laughs> from this point forward. 6 nothing answer now by the Hilltoppers. They reclaim the lead by five. See if uh, San Diego can sustain themselves. Uh, sometimes you expend so much energy when you're fighting from behind as they have been. That was a pretty quick response by the Hilltoppers after San Diego had taken the lead. Palmer is fouled by Evans. Now again, foul difficulty for the low post players for Western Kentucky. That's just two for Evans. And as active as he's been, that is mission accomplished for Darren Horn. Magley is saddled with four, but they need him on the floor desperately. He's the key. He's, he's the key guy inside. But the thing is that he doesn't have the weight. And if you're Pomer, you do a nice job just negating the shot, shot blocking ability by getting into his body, using your size and bulk to keep him on the ground. Here's the only the third Torero Division I player to record 1,200 points and grab 600 rebounds in his career. Three seconds to go. Well, the bounce is your best friend for Butler of late. You get into the lane. We have a timeout. That's the guy they want to have it. And he gets the contact. That's a charge. Player control foul, Rob Jones did the job on the baseline. Smart play by number 22 in blue. And I thought that he was going to pull up just shy. But again, we talk about one dribble too many, and that's what gets you in trouble. I thought right there, that was the play, and just kept going. Jackson will trigger it in. Devin Genty, number three, and Brandon Johnson. They quickly doubled Genty and almost got the steal. Well, you get the ball in the corner against the Hilltoppers, and they will trap you. And they just invite you right there. That's where they let you receive. Johnson will try to fight through again. A quick double. Here comes the trap. They've got to get it across. Not in time. Nope. And they haven't called it. They haven't called it. They didn't call it. Completely missed that. Yes, they did. They get the steal instead. Razelton rejected. There's no question a 10-second call should have been made. But in the end, the Hilltoppers got the steal. There was 23 seconds left on the clock before they finally got it over. Foul went against uh, Jackson. That's number four on him. And Tyrone Brazelton at the line. Darren Horn was begging Jamie Lucky for the call. And about the time that I think he may have gotten the official's attention, the steal occurred. Corner, 
either finish or go get somebody. Striker finds Green. Green guarded by Prince. Nothing. Overtime. That's fitting. How about that? Leave it all out there. All the way to the rack, and Rodgers will pick up the foul. Boy, he's just relentless, isn't he? He will not stop running and taking the defenders through pick after pick. And that's that's the thing. That's you, you just you try to be in good condition. You try to keep moving without the ball, and it's tough because you're doing it by yourself, and uh, you've got four different people who have guarded him in this game. Boy, look at that. Two of six from the line, and I think most of that's because of fatigue. He is really huffing and puffing. Couple of them were short. That one a little long, and, and again, that's a byproduct of tired legs. In a four-point game, you've now missed 11 free throws. It's one of the two. And Clint Houston will check back in for Devin Guinea. Cannot say enough about the contribution on both ends of the floor Clinton Houston has made. They see that free throw shooting problem, even though they've been there 28 times. Those misses are huge. Under four minutes remaining and a trip to the Sweet 16 in the balance. Just playing around this zone right now, not getting much penetration. Brazelton. Palmer the rebound for San Diego and the outlet to Brandon Johnson. We're using that body against Brazelton. Wave it off. Offensive foul. A list of most 21 seasons with some pretty storied programs. Very much uncharted waters for the Toreros. Out of the timeout, Brazelton operating at the point. With Rogers, Lee, Evans, and A.J. Slaughter. The rest of the Hilltoppers on the floor. Brazelton for three. Big one. 64-58. Nice swing of the basketball by Rogers, too. The kick into the post and the workout. Brandon Johnson's the man you want to have it, but he's got to give it up to Deshaun Jackson as uh, Rodgers checks him off the ball. He's working on slaughter. And Western Kentucky's defense just suffocating Jackson, but again, he takes it right to the rack, just as he did against Connecticut. He's got the knack to get to that right hand. Gave him the clear out on that side. Wow. That was a wonderful defensive sequence, only to have a, an outstanding individual effort from Jackson get the Toreros buck. Brazelton, not this time. Loose ball, last touch by Western Kentucky. The winner to face the Bruins of Ben Howland, who edged Texas A&M last night in Phoenix in the regional semifinals. San Diego forcing Western Kentucky to dig into that clock and play 35 seconds of defense. Brandon Johnson this time working against a much taller Courtney Lee, and Lee gets the pick. Wow, what a nice defensive sequence by Courtney Lee, the long arms. He really stayed in front of Brandon Johnson. We were talking about San Diego's ability to hang on to the ball in this half. That time a turnover at a most inopportune time. Brazelton dishes. Evans wasn't ready for the pass. That surprised him. Look at Courtney Lee down. Classic. Staying down on the pump fake and then the active hands afterwards. Oh, Velcro. Absolute Velcro by Lee. Time. There's a chance that two double digits could get into the Sweet 16. Davidson getting Georgetown all they want. 
Trumaine Johnson, not there, out of bounds to Western Kentucky. You know, Ty Rogers made that play to went in and battled Palmer and forced the ball off of his hand. Villanova already a double digit seed has advanced to the Sweet 16. Did so earlier today, knocking out Siena. Well, we kind of we kind of knew that was going to happen yep. in this region. We just didn't know <laughs> who it was going to be. Jackson picks up the foul, and that's his uh, fifth. Dejon Jackson is gone. And really, the fewer options. I mean, he had to foul, stop the clock. That that was uh, half of the enemy. No heroics for Jackson today after that uh, tremendous play that he made against uh, Connecticut, and he did help bring this team back. They were. And they I, were dead and buried at one point, 15 down. And you know what? It, it's him. It's, I don't like the body language of San Diego. It's a four-point game in yeah. 45 seconds. Then they look a little dejected going over to, to Bill Greer. Yeah, this thing is not over by a long shot. Kevin Genty will get into the game. Number three. He's trying to keep the guys pumped up. Now, I think that the uh, body language was uh, one of surprise that perhaps uh, Jackson did not know he had four fouls and that that was his fifth. Swatter 76% on the year. Even with a make, it remains a two possession game, though, as you mentioned, with 45.3 remaining. San Diego needs one quickly. Tremaine Johnson rejected by Evans, saved by Evans. And a foul by Rob Jones. You know, coming out of timeout, and uh, Darren Horn, a little extra talk to uh, to Evans. And he just, he has done this all game long. They are really covering the three-point line, inviting the drive inside. And number 40 cleans things up and then save the shot. Uh, you know, it's, it, this this Western Kentucky team, Timmy, had a, had a nice answer. They lost the lead and immediately came back and stretched it to a five-point le uh, five lead again. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are San Diego's Gino Palmer and Western Kentucky's Courtney Lee, the Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year, with an outstanding afternoon. And looking to add to that total right here, and he does. Now, Western Kentucky lost a 16-point lead, came back and won Friday against Drake in overtime. Lost a 15-point lead, but come back to answer here in the late going against San Diego. Lee is fouled. Really all San Diego can do is the procession to the line and hope for the best. But uh, what a courageous performance by this young group of Toreros, Mike. They um, they came in and conquered Connecticut. Uh, today, though, the contrast in styles perhaps a bit too much for them to overcome. A lot of teams would have went away early in that second half faced with that deficit. And, uh, but they did. They showed a lot of resolve. They just you, you expend so much energy getting back into it. And then Western Kentucky had that quick response to push it back up to five. Well, already the uh, get your message boards ready. Did you see the UCLA be scared? You're next on uh, Western Kentucky's hit list. <laughs> Darren Horn uh, screaming to his team not to foul. After San Diego came back to take the lead by two, the Hilltoppers have gone on a 16 to five run. And the lead is 10. Six minutes and 15 seconds since the Toreros got a field goal. And that finally ends as Tremaine Johnson hits the three ball with 14.7 remaining. 3.8 remaining. 
Courageous, though. My oh. goodness. Both ends. Tennessee missing a little bit in terms of smoothness because of the herky-jerky situation in the backcourt point position. And Butler just mustering up every bit of internal courage that they possess. Ramar Smith with a little congratulatory slap for Jawan Smith. And the Tennessee fans begin to celebrate. And Bruce is saying no foul, please. That's a, a given, particularly in amateur sports. The only thing that rivals semifinal Saturday at the Final Four is opening day. Uh, the opening Thursday and Friday first round action is just, it always delivers. If, if Thursday goes according to form, then you know Friday will deliver. And uh, if the reverse is true, so be it. Lee fouled again. Houston gets the foul. And the longtime assistant Bill Greer, whose team uh, managed to win the conference tournament, become the third club out of his league to manage his way into the NCAA tournament. And they made history, becoming the first San Diego Toreros team to ever win an NCAA tournament game. Hello world, meet Courtney Lee. This kid is special. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure that uh, he'll be number one on the uh, scouting report for Ben Howland yeah. and the UCLA Bruins. They get ready to be clamped down because they'll, they'll run several defenders at him. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. Western Kentucky has uh, got a lot of options. Brazelton being one of them, and you're still there against Ginty. Jermaine Johnson launches again. And for the first time since their coach was a player, Western Kentucky.